take a look at this ingredient statement. This is for a common food I'm certain you have somewhere in your kitchen. One is super log and it's just packed with chemicals, right? Well, you might be surprised this ingredient statement is for a banana. And this is the ingredient statement for a strawberry. Normally you don't see these types of ingredient lists for fresh produce because it's not required by law, but it is required for a lot of other foods you buy in the grocery stores. But I just want to point out if you judge this ingredient statement by the length or by these scientific sounding words, you would never eat fresh produce again, which is not a good idea. So today I want to talk about the word chemical and why it shouldn't scare you, especially when it comes to your food. When you hear the word chemical, what are some of your first associations? I'm guessing it's something like synthetic or artificial or man-made or even dangerous. But here's the thing, every food you eat is made up of chemicals. Your body is made up of chemicals. The air you breathe is a mixture of different chemicals. I think we need to go back to the very beginning and start with, so what actually is a chemical? And in science, we use the word chemical to describe any type of substance that has a specific molecular structure. So it's any substance that's made up of molecules arranged in a specific way. And as you can see by this definition, you know anything from water, salt, sugar, proteins, they are all actually chemicals. And it doesn't matter if this chemical is in your strawberry or your potato chips, it's again a chemical because it has a specific molecular structure. It's made up of molecules, therefore it can be called a chemical. When you look at an ingredient list, I know it's easy to be intimidated by long names or names you don't recognize like myristic acid or aspartic acid. But those two, for example, they are both naturally occurring substances. Aspartic acid is an amino acid, so it is used to build proteins, which we need to live. And myristic acid is just a specific type of a fat molecule, and it's found in both plants and animals. And just because they sound scientific doesn't automatically mean they're harmful. But let's go back to the strawberries ingredient statement. Now you probably recognize some of these compounds. We have water, sugars, fatty acids, amino acids, but uh oh, there's preservatives. There's two preservatives in strawberries, E236 and E296. And if I wanted to fear monger, if I wanted to make you afraid of this food, of this ingredient statement, you know what I would say? I would say they must be hiding something. They didn't even write out which preservative this is. That must mean it's bad. But this is just because in the EU, this is the rules for making an ingredient statement. They have E numbers that correspond to each type of food preservative and even food additives. They don't need to spell out the scientific name of the ingredient. And I've seen so many times when people fear monger about ingredient statements saying, the US's food is worse than the EU, is worse than Canada, whatever. It's simply because those countries in those regions have different food regulations. The ingredient statements don't look the same because the laws are different on what food companies must do. And by the way, the two preservatives found in strawberries, they are simply malic and formic acid. That is what those E numbers represent. And most fruits and vegetables, they naturally contain these types of edible acids. And I know I said the dreaded P word there, preservative, but as you can see, even something as simple as a strawberry contains these natural preservatives because nature has its own way of preserving food and it uses chemicals to do so. But why does the word chemical have such a bad reputation? If I had to guess, it's the fear of the unknown. Unless you're a scientist, you don't, you don't typically think about different chemicals or what a chemical is. And so when the average person hears chemical in your food, they automatically think chemical means dangerous or synthetic. But just because something is synthetic doesn't mean that it's harmful. And if something's natural, does not automatically mean that it's safe. 
Let's take cyanide, for example. In tiny amounts, we find it in almonds and different fruit seeds. But in large amounts, cyanide will kill us. It's a poison. So cyanide is natural, but dangerous. Now on the flip side, let's talk about synthetic vitamin C. It is identical at the molecular level as vitamin C found in an orange. So synthetic vitamin C, unnatural, but beneficial. All I'm trying to show you here is that this appeal to nature, this is a specific technique used in arguments to say that because selling is natural, that must mean it's good and selling that is unnatural is automatically bad. And this is just simply not true, but I see this all over social media every single day. And these chemicals in our food, they are there for a specific purpose. They add flavor and aroma. They provide nutrients. They even help make sure our food is safe to eat. Take hexanol. So maybe you've never seen this word before. It looks a little foreign, but this is really a chemical that's a flavor in many different fruits and vegetables. It's in apples, in green beans, even in basil. And hexanol is just one of the hundreds or even thousands of different chemicals that in food gives the food its specific uh, flavor or aroma. Other names like palmitoleic acid and phenylalanine might sound like they should be in a chemistry lab. But again, these are just specific molecules that help make up fat or protein in our foods and are essential for human health. My point is these complex sounding names, they shouldn't scare you. They are usually just the scientific way of saying an ingredient. I mean, do you know what dihydrogen monoxide is? Water, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, sodium chloride, salt, right? You can go on and on with examples like this. So the next time you look at an ingredient statement and think, oh, that's pretty long, or I don't recognize those words, just remember that they're usually the scientific name of ingredients you're familiar with. And this is the same for food that's processed or unprocessed, because either way, your food is packed with chemicals. If you enjoyed this video, next I recommend checking out why I'm fascinated with a food's microstructure.